Okay, we're back live at Strata Conference. This is SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv. Continuous live coverage, eight hours today, eight hours yesterday, four hours on the, on the early preview day. Um, this is an amazing event. Big data is where it's all at here. Silicon Valley, where the future is being invented by a team of global entrepreneurs, practitioners. Big data is all about how information is changing in this new cloud, mobile, and social world. Um, I'm joined with Dave Vellante, co-host. He's with Wikibon.org. He runs the research for our team. And uh, we're extracting the signal and all the metadata from this show, and we're trying to extract that and share that with you. Uh, we've had great guests this week. Um, and it's been fantastic, so I'm really proud. Hey, this is Tim O'Reilly. Hey, I thought he wasn't going to come. Come on over, Tim. Come on in. <laughs> Tim O'Reilly's in the house. Uh, Tim, you want to come in the cube? Okay, <laughs> we're trying to get Tim. He's doing a flyby. Uh, Tim O'Reilly, Cube alumni, genius, um, just in the house. Uh, we heard he wasn't going to be here, Dave. Uh, well, that was be great to get him on, John. I mean, he was one of our top guests last year. He came on twice. Yeah. And we had him on Hadoop World uh, two years yeah. ago. I think, you know, the beautiful thing about O'Reilly is that the, uh, the content's fantastic. And they got a team of people here that are high-quality content curators, content developers, and they are the source of all the data, um, the books that they write and train people. And obviously, education's key. It'd be great to have O'Reilly uh, sponsor Silicon Academy our soon-to-be-released portal around information and education. So, folks, stay tuned for SiliconAcademy.com. That'll be coming shortly to you in the next couple of months. That's going to be a social portal, open source, nonprofit, and we're going to convert all of our content that's training, education, deep dives. Of course, we'll have the dean of big data in there as well, and all the other personalities, Dave, that will be um, sharing their knowledge with you on Silicon Academy, a much more in-depth learning platform. But meanwhile, SiliconAngle.com is where all the news is, and Wikibon.org is with research. And uh, Wikibon put out a, the first ever big data market sizing report um, ever, beat Gartner, IDC, and all the top research firms out with this report. It actually sizes the market, and also goes down by revenue by vendor. So you can go to Wikibon.org, wiki, B-O-N.org, slash big data. That's a free report, look at it, it's fantastic. Dave. What do you think about uh, the news today? Let's talk about the news here at Strata, and let's talk about the headlines from around the web. Yeah, so um, I guess Azure's back up after yesterday's glitch. It was really uh, Microsoft's first major fail of the cloud, uh, which is really um, pretty high profile, but uh, evidently the glitch was related to uh, leap year, February 29th. I thought we solved those problems in Y2K, John. You know, Microsoft definitely needed to get their act together. And that, you know what, that really hurts them because Azure is looking pretty good. We're hearing good things about it, but this is not the PR that they needed. Really in a reliability context, it's a, it's a total cloud fail. And uh, you know, it's not good for them. I can empathize with them. I hope there's not a lot of lost data and not a lost business out of it, but operationally, Dave, you know we launched a new vertical called DevOps Angle, headed up by Clint Finley, oversaw by Alec Williams. So DevOps, or ops dev, as Theo Schlossnagel would talk about, this is a prime example of operations can't go down. Dev, dev you know, bugs in development, but operations can't go down. So DevOps problem with cloud is a... Well, it's interesting you talk about ops dev. We have a, a Wikibon Peer Insight, uh, I believe on uh, March 6th, or early March, and we have a practitioner from Munder Capital coming on, and really it was an ops dev, right, to bringing operations to application development as opposed to the reverse. Um, other news, John? Uh, yeah, so, so some news that's not related to Strata or um, this conference, but it's pretty big news in the social world, which kind of does relate to the big data space, is Facebook announced their timeline uh, for brands this week. And Facebook really is, in my mind, Dave, the poster child for big data. Facebook is all about massive data. We heard Arun from Hortonworks talk about what Yahoo's doing in the terms of, of data on their front page. 50 million interactions a second going on some that level. So Facebook announced Timeline. I put up a post on SiliconANGLE that was written by um, the main Facebook lead at thismoment.com. Thismoment.com is in San Francisco, California. They are the leading company for social infrastructure, formed by a bunch of XCNet guys. They have a custom CMS. These guys are powering the fan pages and um, uh, YouTube pages for the top brands. And they built an infrastructure that collects gestural data, user data around likes. This likes allows content to be contextually presented 
And so if you want to know everything to know about the Facebook announcement, go to siliconangle.com. We have the best post on the internet right now on that site. So what you need to know about Facebook's timeline, if you're a brand or big data uh, marketer, go to siliconangle.com. And speaking of Facebook, so Zynga has launched its public, Zynga.com as a way to you know, get people to come to its website as opposed to going through Facebook. That's you know, obviously big news. News, John, you've been following Zynga since the very early days. I know you know some of the yeah. original investors. So yeah. what do you think of that move? You know, I think Zynga is a great company, and I think they can sequence from their game mechanics and, and go into other consumer, uh, online consumer activities because they have all the big data elements in place. What people don't know about Zynga is social gaming is a pretext to what's going to happen in the crowd world. So when crowdsourcing becomes a full-on instrumented business, the difference between in-game shooter first person shooter, I shot someone, I trade some currency in a game, is exactly the same paradigm, Dave, that you're going to see in the consumer world. Because consumer worlds will have those same kind of interaction relationships that will need to be measured, tracked, and, and from a business standpoint, if Zynga doesn't have a big, big data strategy, they lose so much money because the in-game currency and the dollars they're making is so fantastically huge that they can't mistake have a fail on their big data. So I believe that Zynga is perfectly positioned to be a kind of consumer platform. We had um, Chris Lynch on a week or so ago on the Marlboro Cube back in Boston, and he's the CEO of Vertica. Vertica actually is you know, behind, powers the, the, the enterprise data warehouse for Zynga. And he said, he made a statement which is interesting. He said, to me, Zynga is a data company masquerading as a games company. So, you know, to your point. Yeah. So I want to talk about a headline uh, a, that someone, no one picked up in the press at all. Wall Street Journal, uh, Economist, Business Week, Bloomberg, Reuters, completely missed the boat on this. And EMC has, in essence, had to s quietly disclose their VCE uh, dollars. So VCE, you wrote the post. You were the only person in the industry, Dave to point out the VCE revenues for EMC, and they're pretty massive. So I want you to talk about what this VCE imp impact is. Obviously, VCE is the joint fetch between VMware, uh, Cisco, and EMC, and Intel. Um, the numbers are staggering. Well, I think this is, um, it's an interesting story. It's, it's big in enterprise tech, and it's a massive attempt, massive reach around attempt by EMC to make VMware uh, the, f the fundamental standard. Obviously, Intel with Pat Gelsinger and now at EMC has a vested interest in this, and, and Cisco, of course, for growth, got into the server business a while back, and John, you wrote about what I would call the urinary Olympics between Cisco and HP and how that got very tense. But so you, now you see Cisco and EMC and VMware, who really aren't at all traditional server vendors, going after that server base. What's interesting to me is the amount of money EMC has invested in this, over $400 million. A lot of people are calling that into question, but this is a $400 billion total market that they're going after. So VCE is a joint venture, so just for the folks out there who don't understand some of the mechanics around 10K filings in public companies, when a company hits certain revenues in a joint venture, they've got to restate their earnings in their 10K. That's the, the lingo for the financial world. So EMC, the numbers were so massive with VCE in terms of booking dollars, being the, the, the major owner of VCE, Dave, run by Michael Capellas, who we know, Cube alumni, um, they actually had to sneak in an update to their earnings. You picked it up. How big were the numbers? What did you find out? And of course, Cisco and VCE VMware did not have to restate those dollars. So talk about the size of the dollars and their staggering numbers. Yeah, so EMC announced on its quarterly call, Joe Tucci announced that, that VCE was running at, a eight, at an $800 million run rate for the quarter, which implies just over $200 million uh, uh, in the quarter itself. But I backed out some numbers, and, and my estimation is they did about a half, VCE did about a half a billion dollars in bookings, and I think they're growing at more than 100% a year. So they've got essentially... I think in 2012, they'll hit a billion dollar pipeline, which puts it comparable to Oracle's Exadata. And EMC portions what, 400 million of that? EMC owns about 58% of the joint venture, so it's had to absorb you know, almost 60% of the expenses, uh, but it also was going to reap the biggest rewards. And so, I mean, the strategy is very clear to me. They're trying to make VMware the winner, because if VMware wins, they win because they own VMware, the greatest acquisition in the history of the computer industry. So some of the hallway conversations on its strata here has been, that's not really been talked about on the Twitter stream uh, for the inside baseball uh, folks, is that uh, VMware does not have a big data play. Um, and there's a lot of discussions around some of the alpha geeks here around where will VMware put their big data layers within their architecture that Paul Moritz is putting together. And I talked to someone last night uh, privately who was off 
off the record, um, told me, said, we love VBlock. VBlock is an absolutely kick-ass solution. Um, it's really part of the whole VC coalition, and it's so pro strong performance-wise that there really is nothing like it in the well, industry. What is your well, take on that? Well, some people have called it the mother of all lock-ins, <laughs> and, uh, and in a way it is, but hey, it's a great strategy. If it solves a problem, the customer's going to buy it. You know, Exadata is a mother of all lock-ins, too, and you know, you got to hand it to these guys. They're, uh, they're investing like a startup, big money, and... Uh, and, and I think it's going to be a big market for them. So um, anyway, that's a quick wrap up of the, the news. Uh, We've got to take a quick break and uh, we will be right back with Impetus uh, after this word